Hello, Frank Whitmer here to continue on with our last video on the IRM Silk devices. And uh, again, we were working with the optimizer unitary and VAV controllers and the uh, and how to program the Silk devices. So that's where we're going to pick up today and go back in with where we were. Uh, just to recap, we had gone in and created a or added a C7400S silk device and its temperatures. Actually, you may get the wrong naming there. It's easy enough. But we have our TR71 we had added, <clears throat> and we added one uh, variable. We added the uh, parameter room temp. And uh, where I wanted to pick up was we added that point in there, and we added a back net point so we can actually bring that temperature out and view it from the system. But if we go back into the property sheet, on that room temp, one of the things we did add, and I didn't fully explain it, was we added in this categories, we just called it sensors. And in the TR-71, as it was in the Spider Classics, um, you had categories so that when you were in contractor mode, you could go to different categories, sensors, set points, statuses, whatever, and group your points that way. We have the same ability to do that here in the... Uh, in the IRM tool. So when you add a parameter and you choose a name for a category, it automatically creates that category within the, uh, the actual silk device. So if we add another point for set points, which we're gonna do, uh, we call it set point, that'll get added. And then if we add other points and use the same category name, those points will be grouped together so that you can see them from the device itself. Uh, so now that we have add that we have that in the room temp, <clears throat> if we go back and look at TR71 and we expand that and we look at our categories and parameters, you'll see in there we do have a category called sensors, and right now room temp is the only device that's under that. So if we continue on with that and we go back down to our palette under the HON IRM control and look at our parameters, we could go in there and if this has a Let's say, well, well, we'll add a set point. So if we go in and we do a set point in here for this device, um, and we'll actually call it room. I will do room, room set point. So we've got that parameter in here. We can go in and look at its properties. And if we go through there, we'll see we didn't assign a device yet. I'm going to leave that blank just to show you another way to uh, assign all of the uh, devices to the parameters. Um, but we could choose contractor only, tenant read only, tenant read write. So a tenant can have the ability to write it or not or have to go to contractor mode. Um, and the categories we'll do is we're just going to put in, we'll just put in set point. Hit enter. And then we come back out of there. If we go back to our TR71 under categories, we just, uh, actually, if I go in and I guess if I refresh, it should show up in here. Actually, if I go up here and refresh, and it did not come up. Oh, remember, it won't show up there yet because we did not choose the TR-71 as its silk device yet. Uh, so a way to do that would be changing the parameters here. Or if we go up here on this device, this silk device, we have an action in there called attach unassigned parameters. So if you only have one silk device, you could add all of your parameters and in one command uh, assign them all to that to that device. So here we're going to say attach this unassigned parameters and now you'll see that it is associated with TR71. Uh, so let's go back to its parameters and then we go back into current categories and we still do not show it there. So let's try to go in here and see why we do not have that done. Uh, if we go back here and validate, let's see if we have any problems. Everything looks okay there. There, okay. So now we do have, it did show up. So there's your set point category and room set point. So now with this, we want to be able to have this a, as a back that point so we can get to it from the rest of the system and also be able to make changes there. So almost like um, last command wins. So that if you change it from the from the wall module, the value stays. And if you change it from the backnet point, it'll update in the device just like it would update on the backnet point. So we'll go back and we will add a backnet object. And we'll use backnet numeric value this time. And we can put that here. 
and we'll call this one uh, room temp set point and just have that sit here and we're gonna have the out go to the end of that and then what we want to do is we want to make sure that if we change the back net point it updates on the TR71 so we want to take the output of that bring it on back into the silk parameter uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to go into this silk parameter and I want to go into this out save and enable it this way if there's a power failure the value changes persist and stay with the device uh, so we've got that done we've got this set point in there uh, we could also then add other points so you have a um, I don't know we have a fan status or something like that we could come in here and grab another point and I'm just going to call it uh, fan status and if we want that to be brought into the the silk device we have to add another silk parameter so if we go back to our parameter list and we look for a controller value and you'll see here it's now pointing into the Zio so I'll drag that on here we can actually bring it over here drop that in and we'll call it um, fan status and take the output to the input there go into the device this time we'll just go in here and tell it to be the TR 71 save that and now it will show up now if we want we can do our enum as well so we can come in here and say we want an enum of um, let's see how we're gonna do this we'll do this one as a zero off one one and have that in there and hit save and you see what the default would be for that so we're all good there we can come out of there and we now can go back to our TR-71 we can validate that everything is good and we'll check that down here on our status validation was good so we should be able to go in there and turn around and re-download or re-teach to the controller and we'll try it with just this regular teach instead of a full teach and we'll see if it allows us to uh, get that downloaded one thing you have to make sure you do is to create a default set point so that when you're TR-71 comes back on and you go to change the set point, there isn't a zero there or a null value. Uh, so to do that, we're going to go into the backnet point for the room set point, go to the default value, and make sure you put in a, a value that uh, you wanted to come up with the first time through. And while that's doing, okay, it's finished, and you'll see all the icons updated, so we know we have good values. And if I look over on my my wall module I have the uh, it's blank right now because it's it's still downloading the, uh, the necessary changes to the Zio and once that finishes it'll show up on the display there and we can go in there and work with that and you'll see I think one thing I did forget was go in here on the categories I just have it as category category so what's that going to do it will come up here and it would actually make it a category called category which doesn't really make much sense but uh, it still created its own category for that, and we have our other ones in there. So now I have on my Zio, it's there. I can go into my contractor mode, and I can go through and go to parameters, and I can see my various categories in there and choose the points that I want to see. So that's pretty much how you would set that up. Um, same thing follows suit if you wanted to go with a different device, like if we wanted to go in and go with a TR42 series. Bring that down here. Uh, I got to open it up and pick the right one. So we'll pick a TR42 with humidity. And the setup is exactly the same as a TR71. You just don't have categories because a TR42 is a simple device that just has temperature, humidity, humidity as well. If it has, if it's that type of device, and a temperature set point and uh, pretty much that's everything other than uh, maybe unit status would be another point that would be in there so we could take a look and see how that's set up 
And address two is fine. We can go through here, occupancy status parameter. So it's going to require us to put in a parameter for this. Um, otherwise, it'll fail out when we go to validate. So if we go down to our parameters, first thing we'll do is we'll bring in our space temperature. Drop that down here. We'll go in. Tell it we want the TR42. And actually, we still do have the categories because it could always be moved to a different type of device. So categories always exist. So I'm just for the heck of it going to just still say sensors there. We want the tenant to read it, temperature units and degrees. And that should be all we need to do there. Hit save, come back out. As I mentioned, we need the occupied status. So if we add another point in here called occupancy status, come in here, add that point, and that one will also assign to that device. Hit save. And if we look back on that TR42, you'll see that slot there um, with it's looking for a ORD or a handle. Uh, in our case, it's going to, we would do is we could take that occupancy status, do a copy, go back into the property sheet of the device, and in here we can just paste in that ORD, hit save, and it'll translate it to a handle. And and if you ever have a problem with, you know, you're wondering where that handle goes, I mean, one way to do it would be to click on the arrow. It'll take you to what that handle is. The other way to do it, if you do a control L, it allows you to put an ORD in there. We could actually take this ORD, do a control L, paste it in there, and it would also take us there. So that's another way to, uh, to figure out where, what the handle is uh, referencing. Hit save. We go back here. We can validate the silk devices. Looks like it's okay. We got the green check. So we should be able to go back here and go to our controller and go in and go ahead and teach it. And then we can come in here and watch from the jobs sidebar view and that took care of it and then these points we could then add other logic to be part of your application just like you would with the TR42 or TR71 in a spider classic type of uh, uh, controller um, that's it for today and uh, we'll have more to come in the future thank you and uh, I also hope to see you at the Niagara Summit thanks